My name is Salim al -Haq. I'm director of the International Center for Climate Change and Development uh, based in Dhaka and also a senior fellow at the International Institute for Environment and Development based in London. Um, I'm going to talk about the status of the issue of adaptation in the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and particularly what the issues are going into the Paris Agreement. Just to give a little bit of a background, uh, adaptation has now been very well recognized in the UNFCC process. It took some time for that to happen, but in the last few years since the Marrakesh Accords at COP7 in 2001, it has been accepted. And in Cancun at uh, COP16, we have agreed something called the Cancun Adaptation Framework, which provides quite an elaborate program of actions on adaptation. It set up an adaptation committee to oversee these actions, and a lot has been done since then. For example, these developed countries have been supported to do the NAPAs, National Adaptation Programs of Action. They are now being supported to do NAPs, National Adaptation Plans, which are not just for the least developed countries, but other developing countries, and indeed for the developed countries as well. Um, and so a lot is happening on adaptation. There's also something called the Nairobi Work Program on Adaptation that brings together non-governmental partners together to share knowledge and experience on this. So, um, as I said, quite a lot happening on adaptation on the ground and in the UNFCC process. With regard to Paris, the issue that is coming up is a demand uh, put forward by the African negotiators group uh, for an adaptation goal, very similar to the mitigation goal. And this has caused a little bit of a controversy because uh, while a mitigation goal is something that is fairly well understood in terms of a temperature target or in terms of re reduction of emissions, an adaptation goal is not clear as to exactly what that would entail um, globally. Adaptation takes place at the local level, at the national level, and so uh, agreeing a global goal uh, is somewhat difficult. So there are three ways in which this can be uh, addressed. Firstly, the easiest goal to adopt for adaptation would be simply funding adaptation. So we could say, for example, there should be $50 billion a year to fund adaptation uh, starting from 2020. Developed countries have agreed to $100 billion. They have not agreed to how that $100 billion would be divided between mitigation and adaptation. So an agreement could look like $50 billion a year, half of that would go for adaptation. Another type of adaptation goal could be a capacity building goal. So we could have a goal that all countries are capacitated within a certain time frame, say five to ten years, to be able to develop their own adaptation strategies and plans and to start implementing those adaptation strategies and plans. That might be one way to do it. And finally, one way of looking at it would be to reframe adaptation in other terms, for example, in terms of vulnerability. So we could have a vulnerability reduction target. Vulnerability is somewhat easier to uh, measure. We can we are we know the parameters of vulnerability, both the physical as well as the economic ones. We can look at them, develop indicators and measure reduction in vulnerability and set a goal for reducing that. And the final way in which one might do it is to use the term resilience rather than adaptation and enhancing resilience as a resilience goal. And this is something that some people, particularly the UN Secretary General, is interested in exploring further how we might have a, a resilience goal coming out at the end in Paris. But these are all still uh, up for discussion and I will be reporting on them as we go towards Paris and in Paris uh, I'll be reporting every day on the negotiations and hopefully we'll have a, a good conclusion on the 11th of December in Paris.